apparently carnival time here in Brazil, so things are uh, a little bit busy and quite noisy for most of the day. However, step away somewhere a little bit quieter to uh, talk to you about this week's episode. We'll be covering the scratch night in Glasgow, but we've also got some really, really good footage coming up from the New Year's Eve show, which uh, I was part of here in Brazil. So let's move on and have a look at that. So tonight the Flange Bees team are rehearsing for the up-and-coming Scratch Night and we thought you might like to see what we've got to offer. Hi, I'm Kathy Sal. Uh, I'm rehearsing a rope piece for the Scratch Night. I started learning rope about a year and a half ago as part of the Commonwealth Youth Circus and the uh, Scratch Night seems like a really good opportunity to, to try and put a piece together and work some more on the stuff I've learned already. So uh, just to see what I can throw together. From a leg hang, I'm going to do a leg little bar and do a backflip before I land and eventually go to cat. You hook your leg to the bar, want to set like a tweet part, and then pull off that. Good. That's It's a five-person performance for silk, so it's like a new thing for you realize to have group performance for silk. Yeah, so we're just working on our timings and everything tonight, and hopefully it might lead to a couple more shows throughout the year. We realize they have performers in wild and swing, so it would be pretty cool to maybe like perform their one now. Well, it's kind of like moved on from the last scratch night we had in the 29th, so we've taken some of the stuff out, we've added some new bits, and we've worked on perfecting our moves. We hope people will improve on our costumes and makeup. Yeah, proof of glitter. That's it. <laughs> so, yeah, I just want to try on the trousers and the hat and see how you feel about it. One of my favourite events of the Circa Can calendar is the New Year's Eve show. They invited me to take part again this year. So one of my jobs before the event was to assist the artists in putting the aerial square act together. During the show I was uh, one of the performer riggers um, helping fly people during the show and also you can probably catch a glimpse of me somewhere in the footage of uh, singing as part of the team in Portuguese. We wanted to perform a show that would bring from traditional circus, from old circus, all the way up to modern circus, and then to contemporary circus, a whole history about circus and art. One of the most special things in the show was to bring people from several places, from several different arts, music, theatre, circus, dance, and put them in one show, in one special show. We wanted to perform a show that would be emotional, that would They'll bring people into the show with their emotions, with their experiences in the past, and bring them to a circus experience that could put everyone into the show, from kids to old people.
So the idea behind the show was to provide a performance that would integrate with the whole New Year's Eve party itself. This is the second year we performed this hotel and the year before, the first we were there, what they did, they, they told us a theme. Oh, the theme of New Year's Eve is going to be this and we had to perform something they had to do with it. But this time what we did, we proposed them, why don't we talk about this or that? Well, why don't we talk about remembering your, your, your past with your family and the memories and how you remember things in your life and how you value things. So we try to do the whole, the whole evening itself is supposed to be something more integrated with the family, with their memories and how things develop from back time, old time, up to now. So the whole idea of the show was to develop and to draw like a timeline from back in the day up to now. We started in the old days, the very traditional circus like the lions and the animals and the very traditional clowns and that kind of humor that was very very traditional and we developed to modern circus all the way to contemporary circus so we said we're really the lightning the costumes everything was really old and then a little more modern a little more 50s 60s up to now very contemporary and very uh, using less colors and everything more contemporary and stuff like that so that, that, that was the whole idea, drawing like a timeline where you could see the very beginning of Circus, how it started back in the day, and then something more towards the 20th century and up to now, these days. So Maria, she's a professional dancer, theater director, ballerina, gymnast. She's, she's a really complete artist. And she helped with the storyline, she helped developing the characters for each person and also drawing the, the costumes and how that costume will fit well with that piece in time and how we developed from that piece to a more modern uh, cut of time. So it was very important to have someone that has the artistic, the acrobatic, but also the performance side of everything. And they can draw and they can develop a whole, a whole, a whole show. It has always been a dream of Circo Can since I started Circus to put live music in the show. And when we started performing, we couldn't afford to do that. But this time, we made sure we wanted to bring something more into the performance. And that was the whole plan. We brought two musicians from another city here in Brazil, from Deep South. And they sometimes work as clowns and as our actors here and there. It was their first time performing Circus. But the whole story, the whole show relied on them. Everything was relying on live music and how music would be played and how the act would develop with the live music. So they had like a fundamental, like a really important role in the show. Uh, when we developed from the really ancient circus, the old circus, into modern 50s, 60s circus, in Brazil, back in the 50s and the 60s, actually in the 60s, Brazil was under a dictatorship. Politics was, were really, was really complicated in Brazil. And there's a song that really talks about politics and how we develop from our parents and how they give us an example and how we try to keep that going, that the mood. So it's really that something that throws people into back in the day, especially parents and grandparents. So one of the songs right in the middle of the show brought that up and how, how the music can point one time in history and that can change the whole mood of the story. And right in the end, the last song of the show, the last act of the show was the whole crew singing a song about the train and how a train goes every night to a different location without knowing it's going to get there, when it's going to get there. And it reminds me of a Brazilian musician, he's a really famous musician from Brazil. And he, he wrote that, that song when he was leaving, he used to live in land of Brazil. And he left his former city, his home city, to a big city like Sao Paulo without knowing what was going to happen. He just left because he wanted to get a career with music. And he wrote this song about the train. So there goes the train overnight, not knowing what was going to happen the next day. So the whole, the whole idea was to relate that, link that into circus. Because traditional circus, and even circus these days, is about not knowing what's going to happen the next day. You just want to perform well tonight or today. doesn't matter what's going to happen tomorrow because risk is involved all the time. Risk of your life, risk of putting yourself out there. So that was the whole link of doesn't matter what's going to happen tomorrow, we just want to give something nice tonight. Uh, today I was doing uh, two, no, three, three numbers. I don't know how do you say in English numbers or three. 
little parts of the show. And the first one was with uh, Nicoli. It was a duet, uh, like two ballerinas that come uh, alive from this uh, music box. And then we do uh, a scene together. And then after I was singing for Pedro to do his straps, and after I was singing a very, a very strong uh, music for Brazilian culture, that it's, it's really political for a, uh, a very special moment in our history. My name is Nicole. And uh, what were you doing in the show today, Nicole? And I did... Uh, hand to hand and an act with hoops and ribbons and I'll, I was a contrasting too. My name is Luisa. And um, what were you doing in the show today? I'm doing Aerial Square, it's a kind of trapeze, but no. <laughs> Was it difficult to learn? Yes, but I have great coach. And I'm learning. I'm just studying the you no know, techniques and it's really new for me. Today I'm just working with the rigging stuff in general, but for the first time we tried to make it like working together, like at the same time that I'm working with the rigging stuff, we are also on scene, so that's why we have the makeup and the costumes, because we don't want it to like to make like a fade in and fade out to, to put the, the act all together, we use like the, the riggers also part of the show. The As you can tell. Yeah. I'm playing guitar, acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit of drums, percussion. Excellent. So the musical accompaniment for today? Yeah, me and Bernardo, uh, the musicians of the Excellent. show. Uh, uh, Bernardo, you also have uh, an additional role to play, I understand. Yes, I'm a clown in the, in the stage and I uh, play violin. Production-wise, the show was very successful because we were able to get different people that never had worked before, and we brought them from long distance with not much time to produce the show and we were able to in, in a week have a show ready for the first time we had time to do three or four dress rehearsals even with like small audience so we could try that out so it was, it was very satisfactory to have people coming from outside understanding the process and fitting well into the process and helping and creating and not having arguments and everyone work in the same direction, it happens, you know. But it was a very special staff, it was a very special crew because everyone worked in the same direction from day one up to the final day. It was, it was very special in the way, yes. So each episode we've been trying to cover something in circus fitness. So here is Seamus giving you this week's tricks and tips. Hi there, and welcome to our circus fitness part of the podcast. This week I'm going to work on a hamstring exercise, which you can do at home. 
purpose of this exercise is to strengthen our hamstrings and strengthen our core. And we do this to help us when we're in our hocks hang, which is our most basic of all of aerial techniques. This exercise requires a partner, and for this I'm going to use Amy. So from a kneeling position, I want to make sure I'm sat up and my core is engaged. I want to make sure my legs are parallel, so my knees are in line with my hips, and my ankles are in line with my knees. What I'm going to use Amy for is to hold onto my ankles. And the purpose of the exercise is that we go forwards, keeping a nice tight core, I go as far as I can stay in each roll, and then I pull it back, using just my hamstring muscles. Okay? You can't go as far as you think you can. So, I pull it back. <laughs> so only go to the point that you can pull it back. That's really going to strengthen up for our hocks. One more time. Other things to look out for is that as we return, we don't want to snake back. And by that, I, don't, I mean we don't want to push our bum back. Okay, we want to make sure the core stays nice and tight and we come back in a planked position. The other way of performing this exercise is to hold the position, much like you would a plank. So when you get to your full extension, hold it there in what we call an isotonic contraction. And we hold that for approximately 10 to 20 seconds, as long as you can manage, and then pull it back again. So the reason I gave you this exercise is because when we work on our legs, we work a lot on our quads and our calf muscles, and we very rarely work for hamstring muscles. And this exercise is the perfect exercise for that. And that's all for this week from the Circus Fitness section of our podcast. Don't forget that you can attend our Circus Fitness classes on a Monday and a Thursday at 6 o'clock. Hi, I'm James Conti, and this is Aerial Ages News from On High. This week's news comes from the trampoline, uh, which is one of our most popular classes. If you've been keeping up with our podcasts, you will know about our scratch night on the 7th of March. And uh, rehearsals are going great for that. We've got a variety of acts. Uh, the fly team are developing really well and have picked their theme. And we are all excited for you to come along and see our progress. We have Easter workshops coming up for adults and children. The adults workshops will be from the 3rd to the 6th. And from the 7th to the 10th will be the children's workshops. There's going to be a huge variety of different disciplines happening, including tight wire, trampolining, flying trapeze, any of the stuff that you wouldn't normally see in our program. <laughs> on this very trampoline, on the 20th of February, we have Sam McFarland running a bounce board workshop. Now, a bounce board is kind of like a snowboard, and we use it on the trampoline to develop those tricks that we would, rather than out on the snow. We are the only place in the UK offering bounce board workshops, so book on now. On a Monday in the Brigitte, we now have beginner straps happening, and our beginner's trapeze now inc also includes beginner silks. And finally, as always, for our merchandise, please check out the website and send an email to our lovely office staff to buy hoodies and t-shirts. That's the Aerial Edge News on a High. I'm Seamus Clancy, over and out. Yeah, do it now, because I'm